Direct relationship with your creator. Yeah. There's a card, you want to get a hold of us later. So, alhamdulillah, you know, that's, that's Islam for you. you know, we, where, where do, where do you uh, attend? Uh, I go to the mosque here uh, off of 70th. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, off of, kind of close to the Mesa, San Diego border. Oh, okay. up, up yeah. By the college. Yeah. By the college, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can go to anyone. Like for us, it's not like, uh, you know, this is my church and your church. Any no, mosque. I just, I just yeah. Going, yeah. yeah, I go there, yeah, because it's close to my house. Where are you yeah. from? Originally from Pakistan, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What about you? Mexico. Where at? South of the border right here. <laughs> Tijuana? Yeah. Uh, what about home. you? I was born here on his side. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I grew up here, so I was Mexican for a good part of my life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Going to high school, it's too dark to hang out with the white guys and too light to hang out with the, with the black guys. So. Where'd you go so, to high school? Uh, I went to a lot. <laughs> I went to Kearney, I went to Hoover, I went to Mission Bay, I went to John Muir School for Humanistic Studies, I went to Access Home Studies. I went right here, man, San Diego High. Oh, San Diego High, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I got in trouble here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, you in Chula Vista? Oh, yeah, you're there. Um, uh, 46, 47, about that. Yeah. Yeah, but I, gra I graduated in 95, yeah. Good talking. Brother, but, Good talking uh, to you, man. Uh, you know. Keep up, man. You got my number, you got the card, you know, yeah. come check it out. I mean, uh, you know, the thing with Islam, it's not like other religions where it's all kind of like man made stuff, you know? Yeah. No, no Christmas, all this stuff. You don't find that in the Bible, you know? It's not we in the Bible. It's not, exactly. Like most people, like every church, they do Christmas. And you can't tell them like like Jesus didn't celebrate Christmas, it's not in the uh, Bible. Even if they, they understand where the origins were, what the origins were, yeah, they'll never. Admit. Yeah, it's pagan, right? It's Saturnalia pagan. was a European, pagan, uh, exactly. It's like a Norse kinda, yeah, yeah, Saturnalia so, was a pagan festival yeah. on the I, I mean r around the 25th of December. The church was trying to accommodate everybody. Exactly, hey, but but really what they were trying to do is take those European Nordic pa pagan things, yeah. even Eastern and all that, and kind of bring it into Christianity and then force it down everybody else's throat. You know, like if you look in South America, like they didn't come and preach and pre you know, they came and massacred and genocided, right? I mean, Columbus didn't come in. Yeah, I mean, look at it, right? And then now the thing is, you go and educate people and they, they've just gotten so brainwashed, you know, it's hard for them to break away. But me, I grew up going to church, like I knew the Bible inside and out, you know, I saw all the contradictions and stuff. And I was like, nah, I, I, I want to go back to something pure, you know. Well, you so, know, the, the message of Jesus is forgotten. Exactly. They look for exactly. little details to, to separate from one another. Exactly. But what is the message of Jesus? I don't know. Worship one God, exactly. I mean, look at the Ten Commandments, right? First commandment, hero Israel, your Lord is one. Not three, no sons, one, right? Yeah. And then no you look saints. at no saints, exactly, exactly. See now today people pray to saints, and you're like, like, like this. It's totally against the, the beginning of the commandment. Second commandment: don't worship graven idols. Yeah. Every church you go to, you'll see idols now. You'll see statues, you know, Statue saints. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even make yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. imagine if you're if you're crucified in your hand, it would just rip right through, right? So they know this is not even what anything yeah. the, of reality, you know. They, they've also they touch on that or someone it, it, read it. They went through the wrist because that's what it was. Exactly, it would be through the wrist for those that were crucified. But if you, even if you look at the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection, yeah. the, the, the contradictions that tell in the story, whether Mary went by herself, whether she went with another woman, whether the angel had rolled away the stone, yeah. these aren't written by first eyewitnesses. These are written no, centuries please, later, please, right? Ex later. Exactly, you know, man. Yeah. That's it, man. I you got, you got, you got that education. Years, nice, nice. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, you know, at the end of it all, you end up like, well, what did I really learn? You know, I mean, yeah. But I didn't really know, already know, and... I studied the Bible for, I don't know, at least five, six years straight. I used to go to the Wednesdays Bible studies in Horizon, and went cover to cover with multiple different yeah, people. It's not the Bible itself, it's the people that interpret the interpret also the people who wrote it, because we don't even know. These are anonymous authors. John didn't write the, the well, Gospel of John. To, yeah. According to exactly, See, they, even then the book was put together by the church. And exactly. It was a group of them and they were well, they took picking and choosing. Too. Exactly. I mean, if you look at certain yeah. Bible, like look at the Catholic Bible, yeah. it has a different number of chapters in the oh, Protestant Bible. Oh, yeah. Then you look at the Eastern Orthodox, and you look at the Greek Orthodox, and you look at the Syriac Bible, then you look at the Ethiopian Bible. Which one is the Word of God, right? And even if you look at things like like the Gospel of Lucas, Luke, uh, or Gospel of Barnabas, or uh, you know. All these, or the Gospel of Judas, or Mary Magdalene, all these Gospels were, were being floated around, right? Yeah. And if you look at King James and his standardization, that, that's a standard used today, King James, right? Who was King James? 
The guy was like, uh, you know, he was gay. He had like all kinds of animals. <laughs> uh, you know, he was called the Queen of England. I mean, if you look him up, Google it. You know, I'm not, you know, you know, right? I mean, so how, how's that guy going to be the guy who standardizes your Bible? You know, so in, in Quran, Alhamdulillah, we have the earliest manuscripts that are carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have the Quran memorized. You see these brothers here, they memorize the Quran word by word, letter by letter. So you never lose the original. You know, uh, with all this going on in, in, in Palestine. Palestine, yeah. What I've noticed is how strong their faith is. Alhamdulillah. And not once have I heard Palestinians say, kill the Jews. This is, we want peace and why are you doing this? Alhamdulillah. Place? That's something beautiful. A lot of people are noticing, you know, that even the Palestinians that are getting bombed, their children are being killed. They're, they're not complaining. They're not turning against no, God. No, that's, that's, they're patient. That's, uh, it touches you, right? You no, know, man, it, it's it's like I'll be pissed, you know. I'll be yeah. cursing them left and right, but these these people, man, they they their faith. Faith is strong, man. That's faith what is, Islam brings to you. you so that's that's why I'm, you know, yeah. open to listen to others. You know? Alhamdulillah, that that we praise Allah for it, you know. The people of Palestine are strong people and they're going through a, a genocide right now. And you see all these churches and and you know people who are just out there not even thinking about children being killed and you know they, is this political you know but but the thing is it's opening up the eyes for people like you to yeah. see the reality you know it's people who are educated people who are open-minded Israelis were telling us that 40 babies were beheaded yeah none of that was true yeah you know, it's all they're, fake they're doing that we see it daily okay. daily i mean you see the videos of little kids being bombed and, and even when we're calling for at least have a ceasefire, people are like, no. You know? I know, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, right? Like, okay, we don't want any babies to be killed, right? You're about to pray in a minute? Yeah, we're going to pray in a minute. Yeah, no, you're good, you're good. We're going to pray in a minute. You're good. All right, have a good one, man. Thanks. Thank good talking to you guys. All right, man. Read up. Get back to us. Have a good one. Thank you. How you doing? Free booklet about Islam? Spanish, English, what do you want? Spanish. All right, there you go, man. What do you know about Islam already? A little bit? I know there's four pillars. I do not have five pillars, but you're good. <laughs> but I think the more important thing is we believe in one God, right? One creator. Right. We don't we don't believe in worshiping idols. We don't worship worship saints. We don't worship prophets, right? right? We believe in the same God that Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon him, believed in, right? You believe in one God? I believe in one God. All right, uh, good. We we there. We we getting there. Religion is a, is a little different. I, yeah, yeah. It's a little different from monotheism. Yeah. yeah. It's more of pantheism of gotcha. one God being manifested in life-giving forces within nature. Gotcha. Like one living God. Okay. Within water. One living God within earth. One living but, God within. Is that the same God, or are those separate gods within water and earth and so on? It is. It is. It is one God. Okay. And that's what a lot of people get confused. Yeah. That's is, why. Um, uh, like when the Spanish came, they thought, yeah. oh, these are all different gods. But, yeah, uh, Spanish were just using religion for their own, you know, massacre right. and so on, right? So forget about them. But, right. but, but you do believe that there is one great creator, one source of all life, yeah. right? All right, good. Yeah. Now, yeah. that God created water, created oceans he has angels right that are given different responsibilities he has prophets he sends to all nations not just right. you know in the middle east or so on right. in the quran we believe that a prophet was sent to every nation. every nation and the quran tells us that the prophet that came to each nation spoke to them in their language you know so whether it's the incas or whether it's the chinese everybody got a prophet right, right. and all prophets told them look don't worship idols don't kill each other you know go worship the one god right look at the 10 commandments right but then what happened, you see the church kind of changes things up. Look, look at Christmas, right? Like, where did that come from? That's a pagan holiday. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with Jesus, right? right. There's, no, there's no Christmas in the Bible. There's no Christmas that Jesus celebrated, right? Yeah. So, or his disciples or so on. Hundreds of years later, a, a Pope decided to bring Saturnalia into the Christian faith yeah. to try to appease the European pagans, kind of bring them into Christianity. So they change the religion as they want for their own political gain, right? But in Islam, we don't believe in that. Anybody who invents something, it's called a bid'ah, it's called an innovation, we reject it, right? We say we I stick mean, to the original message of the prophets, right? I think a, that makes sense? I think there can be a um, cultural significance between, uh, like behind um, what might have started as, as a, a pagan religion and right. this way into Christianity. Right. It's now just something But that's, that's not the message of Jesus, right? Right. So I mean, like, like if somebody has a cultural practice, let's say you like carne asadas or somebody right. else likes, you know, hot dogs or whatever, right? That's all cool. And that's, that's your cultural preferences. Somebody, you know, 
has, uh, for example, if we go down to uh, Central America and South America, the, the traditions of, you know, how you, how you respect your elders and what you call them, abuela or whatever, right? It may be different from like if you go to the Middle East where they call them by Arabic names, right? right. Or if you go to China and they use their own culture, that's all good, right? But to change the message of a prophet, right? Like meaning Jesus, he worshiped one God. Right. And to be like, no, you got to worship Jesus. Like you see, this is this is taking that European Greek mythology of Zeus and Hercules and yeah. trying to bring it into a monotheistic religion, right? right? And that's what happened. With that's the problem, right? Now, even if you look at the Native Americans here, they believed in one great creator, right? I was up in Canada, and they got the the original nations, you know, the people who were the the original people, the native of, of Canada before the you know the Europeans came. And I was having a conversation with one of them, and he was Muslim. He became Muslim. Why? He said, our belief was the same. He said, we believe there was one great power, one great creator, and yeah. we only worship that one creator. Now, that creator gave us different bounties. Like you said, I mean, we, they thank that creator for water, for, for food, you know, in different ways, in different practices. Yeah, and I think there was a lot of confusion because um, there is... Um, there is a lot of incense being burned to, uh, let's say, a statue of Guadalquivir. Yeah. But that's because it was, it was a piece of art. Exactly. You know, um, it wasn't like they were worshiping. So that that's yeah. the problem with yeah. statues. And this is why the Ten Commandments, the Second Commandment, is that you shall not worship graven idols. Because when you make statues, it starts out as just like a reminder of, of, of who Guadalupe was, for example, or a saint. But then people start worshiping it, right? Like you go to Mexico right now, people worship saints, you know? Right. People, people out there, you know, this is the saint of, of drug dealers. This is the saint of this, this is the saint of that, right? You know? Yeah, like, like you know, like I grew up, I grew up going to quinceaneras and going to Catholic yeah. churches, right? We used to go confess, right? Where did that come from? Why, why I gotta talk about my sin to some priest, dude, right. right? Like, why can't I just pray to my creator and confess to my creator, right? Yeah. That's what Islam's about, that direct relationship between you and your creator, right? And it brings mankind together. Like I was just in Mecca, right? You see people from Venezuela, you see people you from Finland. Yeah, I just went, I just got back a few days ago. Yeah, that's my head shaved, you know, we, at the end of the, you know, the pilgrimage shaved my head, yeah. So, yeah, so it was beautiful though, because I got to see people from Indonesia, Malaysia, all out there doing the same thing as one family, you know, worshiping that one creator, right? And, you know, you don't have that division. Like here, where I used to grow up, there was a Korean church right next to a Chinese church, next to a Mexican church. They were all Christian, but they all had their own churches, right? But for us, the Muslims, we only have one masjid. Everybody, like my mosque, where I go, you see people that are Mexican, you see people that are Afghan, you see people that are Chinese. We got, we got brothers from every different background worshiping in the same role, you know? To show that mankind is one, you know? Like we believe all the prophets were good. Like we don't say, okay, I just believe in Moses and David. I don't believe in Jesus and Muhammad like the Jews do, right? We don't say, okay, we believe in Jesus, we worship him. We say, no, we believe in Jesus and worship the God that he worshiped. We believe in Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. And we want to worship the God they worship, the way they worship, you know? Right. Doesn't that make sense though? Yeah. Taking it back to the original. Right. Yeah. All right, well, read up, man. Yeah, of course. You got, you got questions? We're here. I mean, I know you got that belief already. You believe in one God, right? Right. And you believe yeah, that God sent prophets, right? I do believe that. You believe uh, in Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad being prophets? Do you, uh, if this is just a sudden dark Ask away, bro. Do you believe that God still uh, sends prophets? We believe that God inspires people till today. He guides us. But the prophets, they began with Adam. Noah being the first messenger, and then the last of them was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Everything has a beginning and end, right? In, in the worldly life, right? God has no beginning and end, but that's the Creator, right? Yeah. So that's the last Prophet, but we do believe God guides people. Like, we didn't just meet on accident, right? This was, a, this was something written for you to get this message, right? This is God guiding you, because you got that want for truth in your heart, right? So you already had a belief that there is one God, right? But I'm sure when you went to church and they were telling you this white guy on a cross is God and prayed to a saint, in your heart you yeah, were kind of like, confused me. see, it, it confused you because it's confusing. And the Bible tells us that God is not the author of confusion, right? So now God is guiding you. He brought you here today, right? Like I always resonated with um, the crosses being um, 
being woven from home. Gotcha. Because that's just that's art. And yeah. It reminds you of, of, of what happened. Right, but think but about this, right? When you go to church and see, you know. Yeah, the big cross and the yeah. dudes and hanging up there. Everybody's sitting, pointing that direction. Worshiping a, a idol, basically, right? right? That 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 confuses, right? So that's the thing. Even like, let's say your dad got shot, right? You don't want to be walking with a bullet casing around your neck, right? Somebody's dad got electrocuted, you're not going to put electric wires, right? Like, like this is disrespectful to me, right? Jesus never said, hang a cross on your neck, right? Or to worship a cross, right? Yeah. Even if you look at a lot of the historic documentation, they talked about how they used to put people on, on the, the palm of a tree straight up. It wasn't even a cross, it was a stake, you know? But the church made this symbolism to kind of brand themselves, right? Like right. you look at the Pope, right? Where did this whole idea of the Pope and wearing red shoes and white smoke and all this kind of weird stuff come up? It's all symbolism, right? And it was used to dominate indigenous people. When the Spaniards came to Mexico, when they came to South America, they didn't discover anything, right? What do you mean discover? It was already there, right? right. But they came and, and they used religion to try to, try to take away a people's identity and force something. They took the language away, right? All the native languages got taken out. Why? Because the Spaniards, the, the priests came, they, they, would, they would, you know, torture you if you spoke your own language, right? right? Islam never did that. That's why if you look at Indonesia, Malaysia, where Islam spread, they still have their language, right? Your own cultural practices, no problem with that. But when it comes to religious beliefs, then want to follow that which is clear, divine, and protected, right? Now, let me tell you the Islamic belief and let me see how it resonates with you, right? One great creator, right? We don't, it's not a man, it's not a woman, it's not a figure, right? That creator created everything, right? And then gave different angels and different prophets responsibilities, right? Certain angels would be responsible for the rain, right? We don't worship those angels, we worship that one creator, right? Because he is the creator, but he has those great uh, any yani, uh, angels like Gabriel who brings the message, right? And we then venerate, he has. I mean, for me, you know, going back to uh, where my my uh, great grandma comes from, which is the town of Chicontepec, Veracruz. Yeah. They they venerate the rain, right? They venerate the earth because they know that that's something. It's a bounty that's a from God, right? Sacred thing that God is providing for them. Exactly. So for us. We appreciate that rain, right? We appreciate the ground, but we, we worship the one that the gave us the rain. Right. Exactly. Doesn't that make sense though? Like worship that creator that gave us the rain. Worship the creator that gave us the earth. When, when it rains, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he told us supplication. Allahumma sayyib and nafi' and he hoped to make this rain beneficial. We pray, we, we, we appreciate, right? When we get crops from the ground, we pray to the Creator. If there is a drought, we pray to the Creator. We appreciate when the rain comes, but we worship the Creator that sends it to us. Make sense? Right? That Creator loves us, so He guides us and He sends us prophets, right? Not to be worshipped, but to be followed, right? So Abraham came to his people, he told his people, don't worship idols, right? Eh? He, he broke the idols, right? He said, worship the one that, exactly. Moses, same thing, he told his people, don't worship idols. Jesus, same thing, he told them, don't worship idols. Muhammad, same thing, he said, don't worship idols. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. That's why even out of respect, when I say Jesus, I say, peace be upon him. You know, if I say Muhammad, I say, peace be upon him. Because we respect, we don't make cartoons, we don't disrespect any of that, right? right. We believe in justice, we don't believe in massacring and genocide, like you see what's going on right now in Palestine and all that, right? Um, in, the, in the Islamic worldview, you don't, you don't make any, uh, I know you don't make any idols on Muhammad, peace be upon him. We don't, we don't make images of God, we don't make images of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Or, or of any of the prophets. Of any of the prophets, right? Because that's like what you were saying earlier, right? It starts out as art and then people start worshipping it, right? And that's what happened in the time of Noah. People made idols of pious people and then ended up worshipping them. So we believe in no idols. We believe that we don't need to give an image to God. We don't need to give even the prophet like what he looked like. We have books that describe him so you can read up on it. But we don't need to make pictures of him, you know? And this is why we believe in pure monotheism. But, but again, like, like what resonates with you? Like when it rains, you want to appreciate that. When crops come out of the earth, you want to appreciate that, right? But worship the one that gave it, right? Makes sense? Yeah. So you believe in one God, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. And you believe that God sent prophets, right? Well, I like Abraham, Moses. That 
God sent the Abrahamic prophets. Okay, good. But um, my question is, so what about the Americans? So as I said, as Muslims, we believe prophets came here as well, right? The prophets were not just the ones that are mentioned in the Bible and the Quran, there were so many more. Allah tells the Quran, we sent a prophet to every nation. And Allah tells the Quran, Ma arsalan rasulin illa bilisani qawmihi. We'd not send a prophet except in the tongue of his people. So we believe in the Americas, there were prophets and they spoke in the language of the people. We may not know their names today, right? Buddha could have been a prophet, I don't know, right? Um, you know, maybe some of the people that the Hindus worship could have been prophets. They shouldn't worship them, but they ended up worshiping them, right? Same thing with Jesus. He was a prophet. He didn't say worship me. He said worship the Father, right? The one that sent him. He worshiped God, but people ended up worshiping him, right? It's actually a... Uh, uh from what I remember, that was a message of Buddha as well. Exactly. If you look at the original Buddhist teachings, it is not what you see today, right? They were not saying to worship Buddha, right? He was teaching them enlightenment, good principles, don't kill, don't harm others, right? Hey, you're a good one, right? But then people twist it up. Like today you got Buddhist armies, right? You go to Burma, they got Buddhists doing genocide, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's not the original message of Buddha. Today, even if you look at the statues, the big fat guy, that's not even Buddha. That's usually yeah, a statue of Confucius, Buddha, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they kind of, they, they changed it all up. Buddha, according to historians, was a very skinny man, right? Yeah. So uh, that's the whole point that people change that message. But we have the Quran, we have it in Spanish. So uh, you want to give it to you. And this is, this is the words of God preserved, right? Not the words of Muhammad, peace be upon him, not the words of people, but the words of God, right? Absolutely. We translate in different languages, but we keep the original Arabic preserved till today, you know? So you believe in God, you believe that prophets were sent, including the Americas, to every nation, right? You believe God would send that guidance, right? Yeah. yeah no, you're Muslim, bro, that's the Muslim belief. Uh, no, think about this, right? Yeah. What is a Muslim? There is what we call aqidah, the Muslim belief, right? The base of it is what we call the shahada. That I bear witness, there is none that should be worshipped except that one great creator. And I bear witness that the prophets are the prophets of God, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being the last. We believe in all the prophets, Jesus, Abraham, Moses. We believe those are prophets sent and those that we don't even know their names. But we do believe prophets were sent to every nation, as you said, right? Yeah. That belief resonates with you, right? Yeah, it does resonate with me. It's just, there are parts of, of, of the, my culture that I grew right. up with. What? Like what? Uh, like, um, like, like, for example, the kind of foods you like, right? Or the kind of, you know, whatever, any, how, you, how you deal with the family well, gatherings, you know. None of that takes away from Islam, right? My grandparents would tell the rest of the family that there are times in which um, you're going through a tough time. Right. If you, uh, si te comiendas, I'm not sure how to say it, but yeah. um, to San Judas, yeah. uh, he'll be the one to bring you out of those tough situations. Right. You know? But think about it, that's a saint, right? But he think is, about this. What about you worshiping the creator of that saint? Yeah, I mean, that makes that more that sense, is. right? Mm -hmm. Who did that saint pray to? Well, he did God. pray to God. See, some things my parents told me when I was growing up that were good and some things that they were wrong about. Like they're, they, they loved me, they wanted to guide me, but doesn't mean everything they said is right, right? But when you know that a, a saint isn't to be worshipped, the one who created that saint should be worshipped, then you should go and teach your family that, yeah. right? Educate um. them. But other things in cultural practices, the kind of foods you like, the clothes you like, the way, that's all good. Like Islam, yeah, yeah. Islam doesn't take that's, away from that, right? That's the thing uh, is that, I mean, from what my observation, especially uh, getting to study my own culture in a very uh, uh, profound way, Yeah. Um, I found that politics, um, religion, and culture, they kind of go hand in hand. They kind of borrow from each other. They. Uh, right, but think about that. We have a lot of people in Mexico, people in, in South America that are Muslim today, right? Alhamdulillah, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Mexico, right? right? That doesn't take them away from being Mexican, right? They're still Mexican, but they're Muslim, right? Yeah. Imagine before the, the conquistadors came and forced Christianity, Catholicism, the, the land was still there, the culture was there, but they didn't worship saints, right? They worship the, that great creator above, right? I mean, they didn't worship saints, but there are times in which uh, these, these statues um, 
referencing these these uh, bountiful gifts from God, yeah, they would take shape in uh, in certain individuals just to represent manifestation, a manifestation of something. Exactly. And but, but that's exactly what you were saying earlier, right? Originally, these were things made for art, right? And kind of culture and history and remembrance. Right. But then people started to worship it, like you were talking about Guadalupe, right? So this is the same thing. But if today you, what's your name? Lalo. 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 Eduardo. Today, Eduardo, Lalo sure for Eduardo. Whatever you like, bro. Right, Eduardo, today, if you're a Muslim, and you worship the creator of Jesus and Moses and Abraham, the one who sent them with a the message, right? You're still going to be Mexican. You're still going to be American. You're still going to be Chicano. You're still going to have your culture. You're going to still be who you are, but you'll be the best version of yourself because you're not going to be worshiping some man, right? You're not going to be worshiping some idol. You're going to be worshiping the one that created the universe, right? Doesn't that make more sense, right? And then you can take that message to your peoples, right? We got a lot of brothers here. There was brothers here earlier that were here with us that are Mexican and they're taking that da'wah to Mexico today and they're educating their people, right? Even if you look at the history of Mexico, Islam was in Mexico before the Spanish. They just didn't massacre everybody, right? You know Guadalajara, right? Wadila. Uh, yeah. If you actually... Wadi Hadara. Oh, you know! Wadi Lihijara. Wadi Lihijara. How did you know? Uh, I was looking at like where different places got their names. And right. Like Mazatlan yeah. got its name from... Uh, the Nahuatl word a uh, place a uh, place bountiful with deer. Nice. Land. Okay. And why is the Hara? Wadi Wa Hara Valley of the Stones. I yes, think? but it's Arabic. Right. Wadi Li Hijara. With Wadi Li Hijara. How did they get to be that name? Well, from what I know is that there is a, a another place called Wadi Li Hara in Spain. It's interesting, right? So Wadi Li Hijara, the the Valley of Stones or Pebbles. This is something that is a pure Arabic, it's not even Spanish, right? right? And how they got this name, according to different historians, one is that there were Muslim traders that came to the Americas, but they just didn't massacre everybody. They didn't, they didn't do a genocide, right? So there were yeah, people the that were Muslim. Moors, others, they, they would come to trade, right? But they would, they, they would just bring the message of Islam, so they already had Muslims here, right? This one theory, right? The other also being that when the Spanish came, they brought some of these names with them, right? But that means even then the influence was there. Right? So now it tells you that, again, even in South America, the culture of Islam has already been there. You see so many people in Mexico named Fatima and Omar and so on, right? Uh, so being Muslim will not take anything away from your heritage, well, right? Here's the thing, because, I mean, um, as much as I've been feeling, uh, you know, called towards um, Islam. Islam, you've been feeling it, I mean, nice. Especially right now with this, like, global attention being given to... Uh, right. The, the Islamophobia happening in, in right uh, with Gaza uh, and the, the genocide, East, yeah. yeah. Um, What's stopping like you? My, uh, well, would I be able to still be a danzante, a conchero, um, and have the ceremonies in which the uh, you know basically the idols yeah. that are that are made that are. Um, that have both an artistic and, and spiritual sense. So, so let's take it back a step, right? The first thing that we have to do is say, what is your belief, right? Once you have the belief and you are Muslim, then when you have cultural practices, then we can talk about each one and what parts of it are going to be acceptable, right? That are just cultural, artistic, and which parts are going to be unacceptable because they, they're polytheistic, right? But again, that, that doesn't take away from your being from a certain culture or your representing that culture. What is the most important thing is those things that were infused in there by, for example, the Spanish by force, we should be taken away anyway, right? Those things weren't something that came indigenous, right? right. I mean, this came, Columbus and them, they brought it by force, right? Yeah. By rape and massacre, right? So whether, I mean, for better or for worse, you know. For worse, I mean. How they, how they got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine it's this, right? Kind of Let's say somebody raped your mom, right? Would you want to ascribe yourself to that rapist, right? Or respect him, you know, like, like that's a rape. That's not, that's not something that happened by choice, right? If the people of, of, of Central America and South America had accepted Christianity by choice, that would be different. But when, when, the, when the conquistadors came, they, they forced it, they raped literally, right? The people, they changed the DNA of a, of a continent from so much rape, right? 
they, they kill the indigenous culture yeah, and languages, they, right? There, there's literally a, uh, a mural inside yep. of this spot. But the thing about that mural is that it doesn't describe of, you know, we are victims of this, is, you right. know, we have survived this. Exactly. We, uh, it's called La Dualidad. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have survived 500 years of, of duality. Right. You know, but again, that, that's not something that was chosen, right? I mean, like, we didn't, I mean, in Central America, South America, they didn't choose to mingle with the Spanish, right? So, so to honor those traditions is something interesting. It's like, if somebody rapes your mom and you're like, well, I'm going to celebrate the guy's birthday, you know, like, like you know, like, like uh, that is who you are, right? If, if somebody gets raped and you're born off a rape, that is your identity. I mean, I'm not right. saying be ashamed of it, right? right? But at the same time, stand up for what's right, right? You know that there's one creator. You know that creator is not an idol. You know that creator is not made out of stone. So worship that one creator. Keep the cultural practices that are in line with that and do away with whatever conflicts with that, right? So the most important it's thing. It's a very difficult step. It is, it is. But look, look, let's make it easy, all right? Let's take it back to your belief. You believe there's one creator? Yep. You believe that we shouldn't worship dogs and monkeys and cows and we should worship that one creator? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So that's the first part of the Shahada. You got that. You believe that creator sent prophets? Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. We just talked about them, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe. That that's, that's your first step, right? Take that step, bear witness to that. And then slowly, slowly, we'll take it step by step. The rest of it, right? What is the belief system? What's in line? What's not? How to pray? How did the prophets pray? We'll learn. We got a lifetime of learning there, right? But take no. the step of the, of the testimony of what you just said, you know? You ready? All right, let's do this. So I'll say it and tell me if it makes sense to you, right? I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except that one great creator, Allah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I bear witness that Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad, they were all prophets of that one God. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Say it with me. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship. There is none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the servant. Is the servant. And messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar. That's the test.